These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm. Or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you. So if, if you remember back to, to high school, there's two different ways to think about trigonometry. There's the triangle way, and there's the unit circle way. Uh, and both of those are useful for physics. In fact, last time we, we talked a little bit about the triangle way. But in order to remember the, the key trig uh, functions for particular angles, it helps to think about the unit circle. So here's a unit circle. So what is the radius of this unit circle? <coughs> Yeah, kind of a trick question. That's what it means to be a unit circle. It has a radius of one unit. Now, let's say we're focusing on this point on the x-axis. What angle does this represent? Zero. That's right, because we measure the angles relative to the x-axis. So this would represent a theta of zero. And what would be the x and y coordinates at this point? x equals half and y equals one. Like this? Oh, I mean, y equals zero, sorry. Like this? Yeah. Now, remember that, how, how long is this, how oh, long is it? Oh, that's one. Right. <laughs> so the x coordinate would be, one. there you go. Yeah. Because this is the unit circle, um, if we're just horizontal from the origin, we must be a distance of one from the origin. So this would be one, zero. So what is the cosine of zero? Do you remember, does the cosine represent the x-coordinate or the y-coordinate? That's right. That's right. And what's the sine of zero? OK. So this is something we shouldn't have to use our calculator for. We shouldn't have to get, break out our calculator to figure out the cosine of zero and the sine of zero. If we remember that cosine and sine represent the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate on the unit circle, then there's a lot of points we can do without our calculator. So the key point here is, the cosine of an angle and the sine of the angle represent the x and the y coordinates on the unit circle. Cosine is the x coordinate and sine is the y coordinate. So what angle does this point represent? What Zero angle? One. Yeah. Oh, what angle? 90 degrees. That's right. This is making an angle of 90 degrees with the x axis. Um, so what's the cosine of 90? And the sine of 90 is 1. Because this has an x coordinate of 0 and a y coordinate of 1. What angle does this point represent? Negative 1, 0. Oh, 180. Sorry, 180. That's right. This is an angle of 180 degrees with the positive x axis. It looks like you already figured out what the cosine of 180 is and the sine of 180. So again, what's the cosine of 180? 0. Oh, negative 1. And the sign? Zero. That's right. This has a x coordinate of negative 1 and a y coordinate of 0. We might as well finish up here. What angle of theta does this represent? Um, 270. That's right. Because this would be a 270 degree angle with a positive x axis. You know, that probably wouldn't come up too much. On the other hand, this also represents a negative 90 degree angle. It's negative 90 degrees from the positive x axis. Right. <laughs> we shouldn't have to use our calculator for. All right, well, we might as well finish up with the other points you're expected to know. You're expected to know 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and 60 degrees. Well, those are going to use the numbers 1 over 2. We're going to be using these three numbers. That's right. 
these three numbers here, which of these is the biggest number and which is the smallest number? Well, what's bigger, one or root two? One. No, root two, sorry. Because one times one is just one. One can't be the square root of two, because one times one is just one. The square root of two is what, like 1.4 or something, you can see if you do it on your calculator. And what's bigger, root two or root three? So the key here is to remember what the order of these numbers is. So we want to figure out, say, this point at 30 degrees. Now, which is bigger here, the x-coordinate or the y-coordinate? So the x-coordinate should be root 3 over 2. And the y-coordinate should be 1 over 2. Now, how about if we're thinking about 45 degrees? This should be making two, um, this is exactly in the middle, right? 45 degrees is exactly between 0 and 90, so the two um, lengths should be the same. <clears throat> if you make a triangle out of that, it would be a 45, 45, 90 triangle, which would mean it would be isosceles. Equal angles mean equal sides. So here we use root 2 and root 2. And finally, how about a 60 degree angle? What would the coordinates be for a 60 degree angle? You can see from the picture now that now the y coordinate is bigger than the x coordinate. So the root 3 and the 1 half change places over here. So for example, what is the cosine of 45 degrees? Root 2 over 2. It's the x coordinate from over here, root 2 over 2. What's the sine of 60 degrees? root 3 over 2. 60 degrees is over here, and the sine is the y-coordinate. So cosine represents the x-coordinate on the unit circle, and sine represents the y-coordinate on the unit circle. OK, well, I think you get the basic idea. So now we can figure out, um, without a calculator, the x and the y-coordinate for any, um, any of these three reference angles. I think these are the only angles your instructor would expect you to know on the exam. Um, the angles that are on the axes and 30, 45, and 60. You should also now be able to figure out, say, 30 degrees to the left of the vertical here, or 30 degrees above the horizontal over here, um, based on the unit circle, although even that's not too likely to come up on the exam. It's usually going to be working with acute angles, like we are over here. I think we talked about that a little last time. Okay, so if you uh, need to remember any of these, if you're having trouble with it, it's good to actually draw the unit circle and draw the angle. And remember that the cosine is the x-coordinate on the unit circle, and the sine is the y-coordinate. And uh, then it should be pretty easy to remember where we use root 3 over 2 and where we use 1 over 2 if we ask who's bigger, the x and the y or the x or the y-coordinate. And as long as we keep in mind that 1 is smaller than root 2, and that's smaller than root 3. Not all the denominators here are the same, so that makes this easier to compare. These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm. Or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you.